This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Schlock visionary, Edward D. Wood, Jr. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. This is the second of our series covering classic purveyors of what is called schlock cinema. Films made on the cheap for maximum profit and minimal effort. Ed Wood is best known for what is considered to be the worst film of all time, Plan 9 from Outer Space, although there really are far worse films. But there's a lot more to him. His childhood, as you might suspect, was rather strange. His mother wanted a daughter, so she put him in dresses, (laughs) which led to a fascination with Angora sweaters and cross-dressing, which informed his later life. He was also fascinated with film, often skipping school to watch and re-watch movies at the local theater. He was given a movie camera at age 17 and used it to shoot footage of the ill-fated Hindenburg before the crash. Wood enlisted in the Marines shortly after Pearl Harbor and was involved in the Asian campaign, losing two teeth to a Japanese soldier's rifle butt and getting shot in the leg by a machine gun. After the war, his love of the bazaar led him to a carnival freak show working as a bearded lady. He later moved to Hollywood to make his fortune, doing some work behind the scenes in early TV westerns and variety shows. He also wrote, directed, produced, and starred in an unsuccessful play about his marine years. The first film he directed was a quasi-documentary loosely based on a big story of the time, The Sex Change of Christine Jorgensen. Glenn or Glenda has both dramatic and realistic scenes taking us from a philosophical narrative about life and private thoughts via the voice of Bella Lugosi to the suicide of a transvestite to a story within a story about a psychiatrist and a man named Glenn who had a compulsion to dress up in women's clothing, played by Wood, to a dream sequence involving a wedding with a stereotypical devil as a witness. Two scenes of sadomasochism added by the producer later for titillation purposes to Glenn slash Glenda's wife accepting him even to the point of offering him her Angora sweater to another transvestite who kept his secret in military service later getting a sex change operation told mostly via stock footage. So as you can see it's partly autobiographical. It only had a limited release partly based on the bizarre content and partly due to its schizophrenic narrative. Now, we mentioned Bela Lugosi, who by that point in his life was mostly destitute and addicted to morphine. He accepted any job, and he and Wood became friends slash enablers. Wood's second film, Jailbait, was an exploitation film noir featuring future Hercules Steve Reeves in his first film appearance. It involved plastic surgery in order to steal another's identity. The film's narrative is rather tight, and its complete and understandable story earned his highest Rotten Tomatoes score, 29%. Bride of the Monster is a more conventional sci-fi movie with Lugosi returning as a mad scientist with an intent to raise a race of super beings. Not super beans, super beings. Lugosi's henchman was Tor Johnson, an ex-wrestler who became part of Wood's stock company. The film had troubles getting financing and was finally funded by a Texas rancher who insisted his, his son, Tony McCoy, be cast as the hero. You can see this film being riffed on MST3K. This was followed by his masterpiece, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Bela Lugosi was given star billing despite the fact that he was dead prior to filming. Footage from an earlier unproduced film was used, along with new footage of the same character, except that he was much taller and looked nothing like him. A cape was kept in front of the faux Lugosi's face, a la Dracula. And supposedly this was... Uh, this was Ed Wood's chiropractor. <laughs> Apocryphally. The film's plot is explained by its alternate title, Grave Robbers from Outer Space. Narrator Criswell, an L.A. psychic known for his stentorian voice and terrible predictions, links the otherwise unrelated Lugosi footage. The film features a graveyard with cardboard headstones that shake when people walk by, flying saucers that look like spray-painted paper plates. They're actually a UFO model kit of the time, an airplane cockpit featuring a shower curtain as a door, an effeminate alien villain named Eros with the classic line, You see? You see? You're stupid minds! Stupid! Stupid! The use of the word there, meaning three different things in the same sentence, as in, 
Well, you'll be up there while I'll be in there, and the aliens will be out here while I will be locked up in there. And the very wise statement, well, he's dead, murdered, and somebody is responsible. The film was shot in 1956, but took three years and multiple distributors to get it to the screen. The Violent Years, shot the same year as Plan 9, was a juvenile delinquent film involving a girl gang and can also be seen riffed on MST3K. Night of the Ghouls switched back to horror with many of the same characters from Bride of the Monster involving a haunted house as well as Criswell as both a narrator and a member of the undead. The film was never given a major theatrical release and was considered lost until a print and resulting VHS appeared in the 80s. The Sinister Urge in 1960 involved the scourge of smut peddling, a prescient glimpse into Wood's later career. It also had elements of a hit film of the time, Psycho, with a sexually motivated psychopath. You can see this rift on MST3K. It's his last mainstream work. By this point in Wood's life, he was already on his third marriage, the first two ending up as ingenues in his films, and the third staying with him until his death. He was an alcoholic and suffered from depression. He couldn't get work in legitimate film, so he moved to exploitation and pornography. 1965's Orgy of the Dead involved both graveyards and burlesque shows, including nudity. Criswell was back as narrator and is the classiest of the films going forward, with titles like Necromania and Take It Out in Trade. Wood also became a prodigious writer of lurid crime and sex novels into the 1970s. By 1978, he and his wife were severe alcoholics and homeless. After moving into a friend's apartment, Wood fell ill and died of a heart attack. Wood's career was forgotten until the 90s when exposure of his films on MST, the independent film circuits, and the rise of schlock appreciation led to both a book about his life, Nightmare of Ecstasy, which I highly recommend, and an eponymous Tim Burton biopic starring Johnny Depp with Martin Landau as Lugosi, winning him an Oscar for the role. So even though the movies are bad, you might want to watch them. And if you don't, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Pull the string! Pull the string!